So good afternoon. Welcome to research to practical research one. We are going to tackle this afternoon the basics of this subject. And by basics, I mean we will remind ourselves of what significant words in research actually mean, how they are defined, and how research goes as we are also going to tackle on the research process. We will also find out what makes research research that's equivalent to knowing the characteristics of research. For this, I'm going to have a screen that's going to be shared to you. It's not similar to, a, to the screen that you'll have in Philo, so there's no need to, uh, to know which between the two kinds of babies you'd rather keep alive, the human baby or the 10 baby dolphins. Share the sharing of screen now. Here. Can you see this? Can everybody see this part? Can you all see this? Okay. Oh, uh, wait. There. James Hispania, admit. Okay. Importance, characteristics, process, and ethics of research. To begin, we're going to define research, and I couldn't help but always bring us back to the etymological definition of research. There are a lot of etymolo etymologies available for the word, but I'd like us to, to, to tackle on one, which also presents the reason for doing research. Research is, is of French origin, and that's the word. How would you want to pronounce the word, Edson? How would you hey, pronounce Charter. it? <laughs> I knew it. You'll pronounce it the churcher. Just like church. The church. Churcher. What about um sorry, sorry, there, 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 there. I'll call who will I call? Alan, how would you want to pronounce how would you pronounce this word? Rich watch. Yeah, that's too French. Rich watch. That's just too French. What about James? How would you pronounce this? Oh. <laughs> Recherche. Again, sorry. Recherche. 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 I would allow you to enjoy the moment of having your own style of pronouncing the word. But Lucia, can you perhaps enlighten us on how this word is to be pronounced? Do you know some French words? Is it not close to Italian? No. Oh, okay. I tried to Google it. I don't know if I could pronounce the word right, but at the end of the day, it's a spelling that matters more, especially when it comes to an exam, when you are tasked to provide the word. So I think it's the spelling that we shall, we shall emphasize for now. I'll do my best, but what I heard from Google when I, when I, press when I placed the word is that it's pronounced as Shershi. Research. Research. So it's more or less do it's like doing a subtle sh sure sound for the last syllable. But it's, it's all right, it's all right. We can move on from the pronunciation. But let's see what it means. The French word actually, that French word actually means to search after or investigate. So research is a matter of investigation, knowing or searching after. Knowing why things have come to be, knowing why things happen, trying to provide explanations of phenomena around us, or trying to know why that phenomenon or condition is true to a particular situation only. Or if possible, can that condition be made applicable to another circumstance? That's how this French word defines research. But then there is another one which I believe I, owe, I ought to share to you, and it's this definition. Research is defined to be a patient, careful, sorry, systematic, and careful investigation undertaken to determine or establish facts and or relationships. Let's, be, let's begin with the first underlined word, which is the word patient. 
why do people consider a, a research a patient undertaking or a patient investigation? This just reminds us that research considers the element of time. In fact, you can do short-term researches or long-term researches. Usually, what students do in school or when they're in college is to make a short-term research. A year-long type of research is, is, is still a short-term research. Long-term researches would probably take, what, three years, four years, five years. When you do anthropological studies, expect that they would take longer periods of time to get done, to be finished. Another thing that we should consider in this being a patient investigation is when you do your research, you can't expect that things can go the way you hope them to be. Allow me to use myself. This is also an example that I use in a different class. Allow me to use myself as an example for this. As of this time, I'm actually doing my master's thesis. And the topic of my master's thesis is public speaking. Familiar with that subject? Yes. You, a, a lot of tears had been shed in, in that subject. Uh, you've had your share of your TEDx talks. Oh. So that was the supposed target or object of my master's thesis. However, circumstances this time or this period has made me decide not to proceed with the last two chapters of my paper because it would be difficult for me to make use of the current setup of public speaking, speaking because I'm worried that the data I might, I, I'll obtain might not be as authentic and as valid as how they should be compared to when public speaking is done in a classroom setup. Just imagine asking students to, to memorize an, an oratorical piece and then they would deliver in front of the camera only to find out that the piece was actually placed on the screen of their computer. They could appear, uh, they, they could make themselves appear prepared. They would make themselves appear as though they have memorized the piece, but actually students might have just faked it. And that's something, though it's probably far from what's going to happen, it's still not that yeah, it's not that far from actually happening. It, may, it might sound absurd, but it's still a possibility. The circumstances now have, have hindered me from proceeding with the remaining two chapters of my research paper. So I should be patient. I should be patient as a researcher to wait for the right time so that I can proceed with my research work. Or, for instance, this could be a situation that you might encounter soon. You want to know how your classmates have managed to survive during this crisis. So what you did was you created, you devised a questionnaire, and then you sent them online to your classmates. To your surprise, after one week, no one gave the questionnaire back to you. Two weeks passed, only one student, one classmate gave the questionnaire back to you. Why? The others must have just been preoccupied with a lot of things to attend to. Your questionnaire was perhaps at the bottom in their list of priorities. And you cannot expect, you cannot just force them to answer your questionnaire because you told them so. We don't coerce our respondents. We don't invade their time of privacy. We give them their privacy. So see, you have to be patient. Revisions. Expect that when it comes to revisions, your paper will probably be going through a lot of them. Just from last year's batch, there were groups who submitted works and that their works had to go through three or four revisions. And that's normal. You can't expect 
that after one revision, your work is perfect right away. Worse, you hard bind your paper, your research, and then when you flip it open, you'll still find an error. That's a possibility. You might feel that after having printed the last page of your work, after having gone through four or five revisions, you might feel that your work is already good and that it's worth displaying already. But if someone else were to look at it, then suddenly, to your surprise, an error is still there. Revisions require patience. Another description for research is that it is a systematic investigation. From the root word system, it follows a set of procedures, steps. You can't just simply jump from one part to another because doing so might just give untoward results to your paper. It just might not be beneficial to your work. That is why we follow a series of steps. Especially, especially if we talk about the data gathering procedures. That's that part of a research paper that presents what you'll do in order to gather your data. Sometimes people might, researchers, especially newbie or yeah, newbie researchers, just randomly pick or decide on a particular set of steps to follow, only to find out that these steps yielded invalid results. Remember the system that works in research. Lastly, research is defined, described as a careful investigation. Why is it seen as a careful investigation? Let's be reminded what we obtain in research are information. We call them research data. And we cannot just simply tamper with these data in whatever way we want. Even if beforehand you have already set some expectations, you must not Tamper with the data just so your expectations can be met. For instance, you wanted to prove that calamansi is a better stain remover than a commercial stain remover. Then beforehand, you've already been predisposed that calamansi really works better than a commercial stain remover. Only to find out that when you did your experiment, results yielded favorable to the commercial stain remover. You must not hide this truth. You should present it. If you want, you do another, another study. What are the weaknesses of calamansi? And then you try to add in something to calamansi. Or you try to look into the environment where you play, where you conducted your study. The data that you have, especially when it comes to tabulated data, these tabulated data are very crucial that you should exercise so much care and caution when you deal with them. To the point that you should, yeah, and a very big reminder, you should not tamper with these data. Even if it contradicts the expectations that you have set before the actual gathering of data. So research is described as patient, systematic, and careful, and it is undertaken to determine or establish facts and or relationships. It's possible that when you've done research, it is for the purpose of introducing a new form of knowledge. You are sharing something new to the world. Or it's possible that when you did research, there's already a form of knowledge that's being, uh, that's being introduced. What you're just doing instead is to establish the truthfulness of that knowledge in several circumstances or situations. For instance, you found a study that talked about the effect of parental involvement to elementary students. And results showed that if parents are more involved with the students in the elementary department, they end up having better academic performance or grades. That is for the elementary department. So the truth that's established there is there is a good relationship between involvement of parents and academic performance for the elementary department. 
So what will you do? Will this same concept apply for high school students? Will this same concept apply for college students? See, you're placing that truth now in other conditions or circumstances, and you'd like to know if such truth prevails. In a manner, you are establishing the truthfulness of the claim. So that's research. Another way of defining research is this. It is the scientific investigation of phenomena which includes a collection, presentation, analysis, and interpretation of facts. And that lines an individual speculation with reality. Look, it is, uh, research is seen to be a scientific investigation. As it is seen to be a scientific investigation, it follows the scientific method. It follows a particular a process which we will have later on. That process will, uh, let's try to, uh, let me point some part, this part. That process ends with an interpretation of facts or data or, or of information. Because that interpretation aligns with how the individual sees a particular situation. Um, have you received the module for PR1? Do you already have the module for PR1? Papa, sir. Is it already with you? Yes, sir. Okay, that's good. Next, stages in research. The research process is composed of a lot of, of six stages. And this is the diagram that will present these stages. But if you have noticed, they have been placed in an oval and that presents the continuity of the stages. They repeat themselves. It begins with this stage, the planning stage. What happens in the planning stage? Topics, are topics of inquiry are identified. Possible information sources are also identified, as well as the audience and format of presentation. Then you outline a plan for inquiry. By the time you do your research, I will not ask that you should submit to me what you did in the planning stage, no. These are reminders of what you're expected to do by the time you function as researchers. After having done the planning stage, you proceed with the retrieving stage where, a where an information retrieval plan is developed. Resources are located, then collected. Relevant information are also selected. Information are evaluated, and then the plan of inquiry might be revised. Reviewed, then revised. Then on the processing stage, you have there the making of connections and inferences. Information is recorded. Pertinent information is chosen and a focus for inquiry established. Then after planning, retrieving, and processing, it reaches a point where information needs to be organized or a product will have to be made. Then revision, editing, reviewing, continues. Then sharing. Whatever data you obtain will be shared or communicated with the people, with your audience, with the readers. And then you'll present, you'll present your findings, your new understandings. Demonstrate appropriate audience behavior, especially that when you present, when you communicate these information to the audience, you should expect that there might be others who will find themselves contradicting to your work because what they've known is different from what you have introduced to them. Evaluating. Then you get to determine if the product you've made it works well. You'll interpret the fact that the data that you've obtained and then the interpretation could be, was it a success? Was it not a success? If it turned out to be a success. Are there areas of improvement in this product? Can we improve this? 
it does not mean that once you have completed the six stages, your research paper has now ended or your research topic has now ended. It's possible that after doing the evaluation of the product, you found out that your, that evaluation brings about a new topic of inquiry. So the research process moves in a cycle. The stages in the research process now move in a cycle. For instance, you have a problem in the community and then you provided a solution. It doesn't mean that the solution you provided will not yield another research problem. It's highly possible that there are researchers out there who will study the solution you provided to determine if the solution you provided is the, is the best one or if not, or a better option could still be made available. So the research stages go on. Characteristics of research. Research is described to be empirical. That's one characteristic of research. This empirical characteristic of research is brought about by the possibility of, of using direct experiences and observation. Researchers rely on their direct experiences or how they perceive the things around them using their senses. Through observation, they look at the environment. Through observation, they found that there's a problem that needs to be solved. By means of observation, they discovered that such a problem exists in their community. Or experience provides the drive to study the topic. So research has an empirical element on it. Research is also believed to be a logical in, um, undertaking. It is based on valid procedures and principles. It is not, research is not a contest of length. The thicker your research paper is, the more chances you'll actually have of making a mistake. Expect that. There might be others who think that if the research paper is thick, their work is better. No. One living principle in research is the principle of parsimony. The principle of parsimony tells you that your research paper made in a brief manner is seen to be more comprehensive. A shorter and brief research paper is believed to be more comprehensive. Be direct. Be precise. Just say what you want to say. Just present what you want to, what you want to present in your paper. There's no need to put in some embellishments because this is a research work. We are not after a block. Just, uh, just last school year, I've met a research paper that is filled with a lot of flowery words. And it's trying to deviate us readers from what's really the direction of the research paper. So for so many times, I've told the group, remove this. We don't need this. There's no need to put in so many flowery words. It's not a contest of creative writing. Use logic in approaching your research. Research is also, has also a cyclical characteristic. Remember the stages? The stages move in circles. They go on and on. It begins with a problem and ends with a solution. And then, that solution brings about another problem. And that drives research, other researchers to look for another solution which leads another batch of researchers to look for another problem. And it goes on and on and on. And of course, you need to be of great analytical skills when you do research. You should really try to analyze 
the procedures you're doing, the gathering of the data, is this the right one that we should do? Is this the right procedure that we should do? Take for instance, um, I've had a capstone study, I've read a capstone study before, which tried to determine how far their mosquito repellent works. Yes, that was the, the, the attempt of the group. They wanted to know, not how far, they wanted to know whether their mosquito repellent works. So I asked them how they, expect, how they are expected to gather the data. So what they wanted to do was to spray, uh, it was just like the other year, they wanted to spray the mosquito repellent on a body of water with wrigglers in it. If that's their style of gathering the data, then that does not actually create a mosquito repellent. Because as the name suggests, what you want to repel are mosquitoes. So their choice of a methodology turned out to be invalid. They need to be more, uh, they need to use analysis. To de they needed to use analysis in order to determine the right set of procedures that should be done to arrive at what we could call a valid set of data. Next characteristic, critical. Remember, research being a careful investigation. In the same way, research is also a critical investigation. It's critical because it relies on careful and precise judgment. The judgment that the evaluation, the decisions we make in research have to be made with so much precision because these decisions lead your research either to a success or to a failure. failure. Research is also methodical. As obviously, there are methods that you should follow by the time you do your research. In the page format, we term that part as the data gathering procedures part. In IMRAD, we call that as methods, simply the methods. Lastly, there's this characteristic that sometimes get um, interchanged with another term. I hope that we could clarify it as of this time. Research allows replication, but not duplication. There's a very big difference between the replicability of research and the duplicability of research. We do not tolerate duplications. We accept replications of research papers. Um, excuse me, can you still hear me? Hello? Hi, guys. Hi there again, I'm back. Uh, something happened, I don't know what happened. The internet connection happened. Can you all hear me now? Okay, we proceed. Yes, sir. I don't know though, but were you able to catch on the replication part that I mentioned earlier? Did you? What part was it that you last heard? What was it's, the last part that you heard from me? It's misunderstood as another word or mistaken for another word, sir. I okay. So uh, we're almost that we're that close though to what I just last said. Hey. Research allows replicability, but sometimes people mistakenly think of replicability as duplicability. So allow me to remind everyone. Research does not tolerate duplication, but it allows replication. Let me use once again the example that I gave earlier regarding parental involvement for elementary students and the effect to academic performance. Replication works this way. 
as a researcher, you read that research paper, and then you told yourself, will this case be true for high school students? And so that drove you to conduct a research paper. Do, there, uh, do you share the same concern as the, as the group who did the study for the elementary students? Yes. There is something common between you and that is to know if parental involvement affects students and the effect could be manifested through grades. It's just that the original research paper was talking about elementary students while you are talking of high school students. That is replication. Duplication is doing exactly the same study, which is not bound to present anything new at all. Like for instance, uh, I'll use the people that's found in this, uh, in this frame. The people that are in this frame. It was Sher who conducted the original research paper. And then James later on told himself, ah, okay, I'll probably do the same research that Sher is doing. The results of Sher yielded the idea that grades, the grades of the elementary students can really be affected by the per in positive involvement of the parents. And the same results came out from the study of James. That is duplication. And we do not want that. We do not tolerate duplications of research papers. Replications. The purpose there is to also establish the truthfulness of a particular claim given several circumstances or conditions. Questions so far regarding the characteristics of research? None? We proceed. Here's the research process. The research process begins by selecting a general problem. After having known the general problem, some literature of the problem will have to be known. Literature of the problem, what do, we, what do we mean by this? You have to provide a good deal of support that that issue really exists. During the research panels and proposals, yeah, during the research proposals and defenses that I've attended, it always brings me to the point of asking whether that problem is worth studying. The answer to this concern is when you provide an authority out there that says that the issue really exists. In as much as your observation entitles you to the, the entitles you to the idea that the problem exists, the truth remains that you are not yet an authority for research. Yes. So where can you rely on your claims? Literature, readings, citations. Look into them and look for an authority out there that proves that there is a need to study that issue. Take for instance, the study of Zaya Caberte, Zaya Grace Caberte. I'll use Zaya Sergio as an example. Back in high school, the study of Zaya was on language competence and the effect of students' perception of language competence. Oh no, it was not just perception. There was really an exam that they did for language competence in relation to academic performance in English. The group of Zaya is concerned whether, is, is concerned on the idea of how students become good at a language. Is it on a matter of immersing oneself in the language, meaning the environment where the student is a part of speaks the language, or is it on the matter of um, uh, no, immersion versus uh, immersion because that's where the, uh, because the community speaks the language or because the student is forced to learn a language as demanded by a circumstance or situation. So it's a matter of environment immersion. The student lives in a community where everybody speaks the language or the language learns it for himself because it's really a need. 
So as the proposal and defense went on, the names of Noah Chomsky, I uh, know, yeah, Noah Chomsky and Del Hines were mentioned by the, by the uh, pair of Zaya and Jan Louis Villanueva. They mentioned these names because these two are the ones who provided the issue. So see, we did not rely, the panel at the time did not rely on what the researcher, researchers simply provided. What completed the process was that they mentioned two significant authorities that are at a disagreement on how language is actually learned. So you should review the literature of the problem. Next, you select a specific research problem. You create a research problem, a research question, or some research questions, and then you arrive at a hypothesis. You're in grade 11 now. Did you have, I think you didn't have stat last year. Grade 9, sir. We had so it you in did. grade 9. Grade 9. Had it in grade 9. That's good. Because your hypothesis will have to be stated in a null structure. Familiar? If you are into quantitative researches, if your studies are quantitative research, then expect that you should create a null hypothesis. Any idea of what a null hypothesis is? Give me a sample null hypothesis. I'd like to call Vince. Vince, can you give me a sample Hello. null hypothesis? Sir. Yes. Can you give me a sample Hello. null hypothesis? Vince? Yeah? What about... Uh, I think there's something wrong uh, there. What about... Sure. Can you please give us a sample null hypothesis, sure? Hello, they forgot what the null hypothesis... Have you had... Have you not tackled the null hypothesis? Null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis. Josh, give me a sample null hypothesis. I'll try this. Uh, go, go. There, therefore, blank, blank is not blank, blank, blank. Why will you use therefore? What is this? I don't know. Remove but therefore. Says, you remove the therefore. Example, uh, uh, cats do not fall on their back. Why would you um, state it in that manner, Josh, with a not? Because it's a null hypothesis. So that's the key word. There's a negative word attached to a null hypothesis. In quantitative researches, we are encouraged more to use a null hypothesis because it has a psychological bearing. It's easier to reject. A null hypothesis is just easier to reject than to have an alternative hypothesis structured positively where more or less there's a preconditioning of a positive result. Whereas if you have a negative hypothesis, and sorry, if you have a null hypothesis which is stated negatively, you are not already expecting anything at all. So if it's rejected, that means that it's beneficial to your work. When you reject a null hypothesis, that means that the results are actually positive. That's good for your research. If you accept a null hypothesis, that means that the net results are really negative. And that's fine because in the first place, you've already been conditioned that there's none and that it will not yield results that are positive. So it has, again, a psychological bearing. Let, uh, the next step in the research process, you collect data. You go with the gathering of the data, and once the data have been collected, you analyze and present or display the data. You don't keep the data to yourselves. That is why in the Philippine Association of Graduate Education format, there is a chapter there named the Presentation, Analysis, and Interpretation of Data, and that's chapter two. In tabular form, in, for, in any graphic organizer style, data will be presented for the readers to know how the gathering resulted. 
And lastly, the data will, uh, the researchers will interpret the findings and state conclusions or generalizations regarding the problem. And take note, this research process, all of these may go on and on and on. What do I mean by that? Right after step six or yes, step six, it is possible that the findings or the conclusions or generalizations led to another problem. Remember the cyclical characteristic of research? That cyclical characteristic is a proof that step six is not the absolute end of your research paper. Of course, then that's a, the task of another researcher. They'll learn from your work. They will look into the weaknesses of your work. And these weaknesses would seem now to be the reason why your study will have to be restudied by them. And the cycle goes on. That's how the research process works. But when you do research, you should try to also consider the following. The moment you choose a research problem, be sure that you will not just be, yeah, be sure that you will not be impulsive about it. When you, con when you um, select a research problem, consider your area of interest. I've been at the mercy of students who have chosen a problem which is outside of their area of interest. And it shows in the paper. I mean, in the output that's being submitted, it comes out because it's not, it's worse was that some paperwork were haphazardly made. Different from those who really had that interest towards the problem and that they really are so into the making of the paper. I don't know though if there's someone from you here who is looking forward for research this semester. Is there someone from you? Just be honest, just be honest. Is there someone from you here who is who has anticipated for this and is really excited to do research this semester? Josh has raised his hand. Uh, I want to try. James has waved his hand as well. What about the others? <laughs> uh, the, the expression in the face of Rodney is, can, can be interpreted differently. <laughs> I think there's a background experience there that's, that's rather prompting her to show that expression. Exactly, sir. <laughs> See, <laughs> there's really a background experience that has caused her to react that way. And I can also blame. In fact, I gave the same question to the grade 12 students. They are actually my research project students now, this semester. When I asked that same thing, not one from them raised a hand. Because of the experience of the, because of the experiences for the past two semesters, but if I were a when I was a student in college, I actually looked forward to this subject. Research was one of those few subjects that I looked forward to because of the challenge that's being posed by the subject. True enough, the semester ended, I was not frustrated. While others might not feel the same way, it's not all that bad if you see research in that manner. In fact, Zedric is willing to do this individually. <laughs> Look at how interested and excited he is. He's willing to do this. If there's someone who is willing to do research individually, now that's enthusiasm. He's absent, no, sir. He's absent, sir. He's preparing for a research problem. <laughs> he already has the... See, even without asking him yet, he has already thought of preparing one. Sir, no one will be thing. doing it individually because we're only 16 who officially enrolled. Really? Yes. I ah, officially enrolled, officially enrolled. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Zedric. No, we can still let Zedric do it individually. <laughs> then someone else will do it also individually. 
That would be Edson. I will. <laughs> okay, Edson, Edson, Edson. 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 I'll do it, sir. So, others Edson. will do it in pairs. <laughs> others will do it in pairs while Edson and Zedric will do it individually. <laughs> Di ba, Edson? The chat last week expressed your willingness to do it individually, Edson. Did, I did not chat, sir. It was Zedric. You, you said it as... Against. Let's just do individual research, guys. Yeah, because everyone wants one. Wait, I'm I think it's also nice if say. one of the boys does research individually and one of the girls also do it that way. Oh. Yes, sir. Yes. Equality. Especially the ones who, who are not experienced. <laughs> like, for instance, since it's all right with Queenie that she doesn't have to get paired with Angel, is that yes, sir. Grace? I think she's Better, holding Grace. Sir. Queenie is holding Grace. She's bringing <laughs> Grace with her. The bear that you're holding right now, that's Grace. I know, that's Grace. So I think, Queenie, it's fine that you do an individual <laughs> research. <laughs> no! Yes, sir. No. Anyway, no I have yet to make the final announcement because as of this time, I haven't posted any pair up or individual assignment for research because I have yet to gauge where everybody is in terms of research. Expect that it could be by next week or this week where I could finally make the arrangements. Next, that you should consider, especially this, when you, when you decide on a research problem, consider the availability of funds. This, people, consider this. You can't be very extravagant in doing your research work. As much as possible, know the limits of your resources especially when it comes to this. Research works sometimes demand expenditures. But you should, you, I was reminded of a cap, another capstone research that wanted to determine the bacterial content of the waters in Pangla, in the Bajau area in Tutulan. I, I hope you're familiar with that area. There's a Bajau area in Tutulan. What the research advisor told them to do was to divide the shore, the entire sea encompassed by that area into grids. Grids, meaning squares. They'll assign areas in, into grids. And then they will get samples of seawater from every grid. These samples will be brought to the University of San Carlos for bacterial examination. And each examination, I think, would cost them a thousand, one eight, something like that. And that's just for one vial, for one grid. Then another one eight for another grid. Another one eight for another grid. And there were like nine to 12 grids. That's just the payment for every vial. That does not include yet their payment for the research advisor, the delay, the shipping fee. Much so that the vial comes from the University of San Carlos. USC would not analyze the bacterial content if the container did not come from them. See? Try to consider this. Lastly, investigators' ability and training. In your case, I'd like to generalize that we are all, I would like to even consider myself to this, we are all newbies in the field of research. I would not say that I'm, a, a, that I'm an expert in the field of research. I'm open to trainings for this. That's why I also learned to read a lot of research, the love for reading a lot of researches, because they have enabled me to understand more how research works. As of this time, by the way, it's already 4.33. Um, if you look at your modules for research, have the FTs been, uh, been placed there? No, sir. The FTs are not there, if I'm not mistaken, huh? No. Okay. 
Okay. So what's go expect that what's going to happen on Thursday will be a continuation of this discussion. We are left now with ethics. The last part of the discussion would be ethics. After doing that, your questions, the questions to be answered, the questions that would serve as FT questions will be posted on Edmodo. And that you're going to answer them while your Zoom cameras are turned on. So that after answering the questions, they will still, the answers will still be discussed through a Zoom class. Question so about so using phone, sir. Haha. Uh -huh. Yes, on. How about you using a phone? You can just, you can actually you... do, you can multitask, son. You'll open your Zoom account. Uh, assuming that the call is going on here, you'll just have to leave Zoom and then go with wherever Edmodo is working. And the Edmodo call no, is the still going with my, The problem with my phone, it's okay. If the back, like, we call this, if there's something in the background that you call that, I don't know, it's a recent app, something like, time to time, it will lag. And it's been over here. Oh. Okay, this time. I think it's now time that you buy yeah, a new phone. I'm... Joke. <laughs> yeah, I'm, no, I'm not. I, we're no, no, waiting no, no, no. for the one that we, the computer thing, but it's still and, not. Yeah, both we'll we'll just yeah. see, son, what's going to happen on Thursday, whichever will lead you to okay. better arrive at, uh, yeah, whatever decision will be better for your answering of the FTs on Thursday. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Any other question? No, oh, sir. If there's none, if there's none, that would be all for today. Goodbye and thank you, grade 11. Goodbye. Bye, and thank Goodbye. you, sir. Goodbye. Goodbye and thank you, sir. Hi, YouTube. Hi, YouTube.